Hello everyone, today we'll be diving into different components on the Antminer S19 XP hashboard. So we're going to dive right into the EEPROM chip on this board. So we're going to power up using our adjustable DC power supply at 12.9 volts. First, let's measure the voltage at pin 1 of the EEPROM. You should see about 3.3 volts here, which indicates our EEPROM is properly powered and ready for action. If you're seeing fluctuations or incorrect voltages, it's time to inspect your connections and the board for damages. This quick check helps us avoid bigger issues down the road. Alright, now we're going to look at the voltage level translator on our Antminer S19 hash board. This is located right next to the I.O. connector. So let's get our DC power supply set up again, power that on, and let's set our voltmeter to DC and connect to pins 4 and 5. We're expecting around 3.4 volts, which is perfect for stepping up the input voltage. Now let's hit pin 1, and we can see about 1.2 volts stepping down as expected for lower voltage components. This quick test ensures that our translator is ready to handle different voltage levels. Technically, and it's very critical for seamless communications on this hash board. All right, so we're checking out the VGML LDO in the I/O section. This is similar to the ones at the uh, right side of the hash board. So we're going to start at pin one, and we're looking for 3.4 volts here. That's pretty much exactly what we're expecting. And then we're going to test the input side for this VGML LDO at pin 4, and we should see 0 0.8. That's the correct power input. So here we have the KAD3B LDO in the I.O. section. So we want to get a measurement around 0 0.8 volts. So we're going to look at the output voltage on pin 5 and we're going to ground right on the negative terminal and we should get around 0 0.8 volts for this. Alright so here we have our SJK25000 oscillator or crystal oscillator on our Antminer S19 XP hashboard. Ensuring this little component is in tip top shape is key to keeping our ACID chips in sync. Let's check the voltage with our voltmeter. We're looking for a reading between 0 0.55 volts to 0 0.6 volts. And as you can see, this is right on target for this oscillator to be functioning correctly. All right, so now we're going to test the BM1366AL ASIC chip test points. And these are bidirectional, so I'll show a clip of doing the output side. But focusing on the input, really, um, we're going to start with the clock signal. So we should see a range between uh, 0 0.55 to about 0 0.6 so we're within range next is our TX signal test point which is our transmit so we should see if the IO cable is connected about 1.2 volts so we're on track there next is our BI signal um, you're not really going to get any voltage readings from this you might see a slight spike um, I really didn't get much on my voltmeter but it's bi-directional so it's on both sides uh, just as every signal point is. Um, next, I test the RX signal. So this is the receive signal. It gets feedback to the control unit. Looking here for about 1.2 volts. So looking good there. Next up is our RST signal test point. This stands for the reset signal. So if you do not have the IO connected, you'll get zero volts. But if you have it connected, you'll have 1.2 volts. So we get that. So it looks like this ACE chip is functioning properly with these test points. All right, so I just wanted to throw this in here. We're going to quickly test the 330 farad 25 volt capacitor on our Antminer S19 XP hashboard. So we got our voltmeter hooked up, positive to positive, negative to negative. We're checking that the voltage stays within a safe 25 volt limit to prevent any damage. So we're within normal values. and that's simply how you test a electrolytic capacitor. So here we're checking out the S75 digital temperature sensor on our Antminer S19 XP hashboard. So we located it. Um, it's typically near the ASICs or power regulators where it can accurately monitor the board's heat levels. Let's test the power supply to the sensor. Connect the positive lead of the voltmeter to pin 8, the power supply pin, and the negative to a ground point. 
we're expecting a reading around 3.3 volts. And there you have it. So our next component is the SGM8304 operational amplifier on our Antminer S19 XP hashboard, which is critical for maintaining signal integrity during mining operations. So we've already located it. They're very large, so easy to find. And they're pretty marked clearly. So familiarize yourself with the pin layout and corresponding test points, crucial for our test. So first thing we're gonna do is check the input voltage using our voltmeter. Um, this will be pin one, expecting about 7.5 volts here. And there it is, confirming our amplifier is receiving the correct power level to function effectively. Next, let's measure the output voltage. So we're gonna move our red probe to the opposite side. At these lower right and left test points, we should see around 18 volts when the amplifier is active. Perfect. This means that this amplifier is working as expected. Keep an eye on voltage variations across different sections, particularly different domains, where you might see lower values. So we arrive at the 47 farad 50 volt boost electrolytic capacitor. This is how you test if your boost circuit is working, along with your boost chip. It's labeled EC5 on your Antminer S19 XP hashboard. These capacitors are key for stabilizing voltage and filtering noise, critical in maintaining smooth and effective mining. So let's measure it. Um, the proper measure you're gonna get for this is around 18 volts. So right here we're testing some LDOs on the Antminer S19 XP hashboard specifically, and I'm not sure which one they are because the etchings are unclear, but it could be a BTC203 or a VGML model. So the location of our LDOs will always be on the right side of the hashboard and they are attached vertically parallel to each other. Notice the test points and com pin configurations marked for easy access. So we're gonna start with the top LDO. We'll measure at the test point linked to pin five. Observe a 1.2 reading here, which means it's functioning well. Don't forget to check the input at pin one for expected power supply voltage. Now for the bottom LDO. We measure 0.8 volts at pin five via its test point. Perfect, it's operating correctly. So here we're gonna test the MP2009 LDOs on the last two domains of our Antminer S19 XP hashboard. So first we'll check pin one on both LDOs for a 2.5 volt reading, which confirms the meet specifications. Next we'll move to pin five and six to ensure consistency in the voltage. So we're all good here. Now let's measure the higher energy range at pin four and five. We're looking for about 11 to 11.5 volts. We hope you found this content helpful. If you did, please consider sharing and liking this video to help train and support our industry. Your engagement helps us reach more technicians, enthusiasts, ensuring the valuable knowledge is spread throughout the community. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more upcoming content where we'll continue to provide in-depth demonstrations and insights into the ASIC repair and diagnostic industry. Thank you for watching and happy repairing. May your repairs be swift and your mining profitable.